Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be doing the weekly contest for this week and we're going to start with the easy problem which is find missing and repeated values. And so you're given a zero index 2D integer matrix of n by n with values in the range of 1 to n squared. And each integer appears exactly once except for one of them appears twice and one of them is missing. And so our task is to find which one is repeating and which one is missing. And so basically like in this case, n would be 2. So our numbers that we would be looking for would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have 1, we have a 3, we have a 2 twice, that's the repeating one, and the 4 is missing. So we return to 4. In the second one, we have a 3 by 3 grid, so we are looking for numbers 1 through 9. And so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, we're missing 5. And then let's see which one's repeating here. Nine is repeating, so yeah, it appears twice. So, and the constraints are, as always, for most easy problems, pretty easy and easy to do. So how do we do this? Right, like we have some kind of matrix, and what do we do? So for this one, it's actually pretty straightforward. All we have to do is like, let's just use this, uh, let's just make a matrix. So let's say we'll make like a, this kind of matrix. And we'll have some numbers. And we'll have like, just to keep it simple, let's just have like all the numbers in order. So we'll have like one, two, three, four. Let's say four is repeating and five is missing, for example. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, so you could actually do this well, no, actually, never mind. I was going to say you could maybe do this faster, but that you would have to sort the numbers. So you could sort the numbers and that and you could like walk through it. That would be one way to do it, but that would be n log n time. So that's like one solution, right? You just sort all the numbers like you you put them maybe like on a one dimensional array or something and you sort them or you don't even have to like put them in a one dimensional array. You can just like figure out how to sort them in this matrix. Um, and that'd be one way. But essentially, there's kind of an easier way to do it. Essentially, all we have to do is walk through these numbers and just get a frequency count for all of them. So we'll have some kind of data structure that will have like one and it'll have like count of one, two with a count of one and three with a count of one and so on, right? So we're gonna do this for every single number. And then all we have to do is just, since we know that our grid is n squared and our numbers are one to n squared, we can just loop from one to n squared. And if our number is not in this frequency count map thing, or if the count is zero, right? Like let's say some number is not in here, like five wouldn't be in here. So if five is not in here, that's the one that's missing. So we have five missing. And the one that appears twice is gonna be our duplicate. So in this case, we would have four with a count of two. And that's kind of it. So we just loop through our matrix, get a frequency count, and then loop through our range and figure out which one is not in our frequency count and which one appears twice. And we just return that. And it's actually pretty much it. So we can code it up. So we can say like, let's get the n for the frequency, or for like, what what's the range of the numbers? Then we can get our numbers for the frequency count. So we'll say default dict int. We can loop through every single uh, number. So we can say like four row in range n, and four column in range n. Let's just update the frequency of every number. So we'll say nums grid row column, whatever that number is, plus equals one. And that's why this default dict is nice because if the key doesn't exist, it will just initialize to zero. So it just saves you from uh, looking up the number. So I use it a lot. And so now that we have a frequency count, now we can just loop from every number in the range of all numbers. So we can say like four i in range one to n squared. And remember this is exclusive, so we would do this. So essentially for every single number one through n squared, we have to figure out like what's it count. So we can say like if nums i equals two, then this is the duplicate number. So we'll say a equals i. Otherwise, if nums i equals zero, or like you can check if it's not in here as well, either way, it's totally fine. Then you could say b equals i. So now that we get our number that appears twice and uh, appears no times, we can return it. So we can return a b. It. And there we go. So pretty good. And let's uh, go over the time and space for this one. 
So essentially our first loop loops through the matrix and then our second loop loops through the range, but remember the range is the same length as the matrix. So the matrix is n by n, so we're going like n by n here and n by n here. So, uh, you know, if you, if you want to think about like n being the length of a side, it would be n squared. But if you want to think about n being the, you know, all the numbers in the grid, then it would be n. And typically that's how you, that's how you represent it typically, because if you're given a two dimensional grid, uh, typically you say, well, actually, let's take a look at the problem. Yeah, yeah, they give you an n by n grid. So if they give you an n by n grid, I think we can represent it like this. It's fine, right? So it will be like that. And the space is going to be O of n squared as well because we'll have a frequency count of every single number. So yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason we have to have a frequency count of every single number, we can't just like not have it. We could get the number that appears twice, not looping through these numbers. But the problem is we can't really figure out what number is missing not looping through these numbers unless you do like a sort or something. Like if you do a sort and walk through your numbers then you wouldn't need this, but then your algorithm is slower. So there are a lot of algorithms, especially easy problems that you can either have like n log n runtime and O1 space, or you can have n runtime and n space. And you just pick like your preference there, right? Like, I mean, like Tucson has that for example. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be all for this one. So pretty easy one. Well, I'll get videos out for the next ones uh, pretty soon. So kind of interesting contest. Uh, and I think in these contests, there's a lot to learn, especially from the harder problems. Like there are a lot of cool optimizations you can learn that you pretty much guaranteed never seen before. So stay tuned for those. And if you like this one, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.